The ailerons and flaps were both hinged at the factory, and they did a very good job of that. Having that work done for us saves us a good bit of time. And all of the surfaces work freely and have very small gaps. That means we can move right on to another part of the assembly. Next we have to glue the servo mounting blocks inside of the servo doors, and I always number them to make sure I get them back in the same place. We have one of these doors at each of the ailerons and flaps, and they can get confusing if we don't have some way of identifying them. I'm going to use the EPO grip paste epoxy that sets up overnight. It also has a working time of 3 or 4 hours, and that gives me plenty of time to get all this stuff done. I have a full review of the EPO grip epoxies on FlyingRC.net. To mix the two parts, you just fold it over and kind of gush it into itself. This is a quick way of getting it mixed up. And I love the peanut butter consistency of this epoxy. I used a pallet knife to spread a little bit of the epoxy on the end of the block and then set the block into place in the etched out marking. The layout marks from the factory on the inside of these doors makes installing these blocks just dead simple. I like to add just a bit of weight to this and then just let it sit overnight. Putting a clamp on these blocks without moving them around is really difficult. And this weight thing just works just as good. The next morning the epoxy is good and set up and we can move on to the next step. While I was waiting for the epoxy I put together all of the servos and got them ready for installation. And with the epoxy dry I can drill a power hole in each block with the screws that will make them even more secure. I really like this idea of adding a screw to each of the blocks. Adding the screws doesn't take much time, but it gives me good peace of mind knowing that my servo isn't going to fall off at this door. And as always, we take the screws back out and put a drop of thin CA in each of the holes and let that dry to toughen up the threads. If you just drop the servo in like this, you're going to expose it to a bunch of vibration. This folded up cardstock should put about a sixteenth of an inch clearance between the servo and the door itself. Then while I'm holding the servo in place with the cardboard beneath it, I can drill the pilot holes for the screws that actually hold the servos to the blocks. And here again I run the screws in, then take them back out and put a drop of CA in the holes to toughen up the threads. I was surprised to see that Top Flight includes this shrink tubing for securing servo extensions. I've been doing this for a long time because it just makes a lot better joint. It's nice and secure and unlike a clip it doesn't get hung up in the structure of the wing while you're trying to pull it through. Since I started doing this I've never had a problem with an extension cable. Top Flight gives us plenty of string for pulling the cables through the wing to the root. I use a simple slipping loop to tie a string onto the cord. Then I put a piece of tape on there just to hold the string so it's going straight at the cord. It just goes through the wing a lot easier. You'll notice that the string is actually one big loop that goes from the aileron servo to the retract servo. All of the cords that I had to pull through these wings went in easily. And I used the CA to harden all of these screw holes also. Not adding CA to these holes is just asking for trouble. I just put a couple of screws to hold this cover in for now because we're going to come back later and redo all this after you turn the radio on and set up the servos. I just want to keep them from falling out or banging around while we're doing other things to the wing. These holes are ready to be used at the root of each wing and pull our cables through there. We use the other end of the string the same procedures to pull the retract cables into the root of the wing. And once again the cable went through easily. Incidentally, these retracts need to be in the down position when you first insert them into the wing. And like everything else on this plane, I'd find out that these retracts that were designed just for this plane actually fit into mounts without any problems. We need to put the wheel in a retract position so we can get it lined up correctly in the well. I'm holding the retract with one finger on one of the mounting rails. You want to be careful of the pinch points on this thing. With the wheel centered, we can go ahead and start putting in the mounting bolts, but I always check back at the wheel after each bolt to make sure it hasn't moved. Then after the retract is bolted in, I cycle it a couple of times to make sure everything goes smoothly. I really like the simplicity of these Robart electric retracts. They're easy to work with, they're easy to set up, and they seem to work just fine. 
Now with the retract secured, we can go through and adjust the door on it. Setting this door just right takes a little bit of trial and error, but before long you can get a pretty decent gap that's consistent all the way around. And after I'm satisfied with the fit, then we cycle the gear again to make sure. The wheel doors on my other Warbird were such junk, I just threw them away. These are nice fiberglass doors, they adjust well, and they're staying. This is the three-piece spar we have to glue up for joining the wing halves. The centerpiece is heavy aluminum, and after you laminate the wood to either side, you're not going to bend this spar. I'm using an EPO grip paste epoxy again, and one of the things I really like about this is when you're doing a job like this, how you can use this pallet knife to just spread it out like peanut butter, and it doesn't run. Then when you have everything coated out, you apply a little bit of clamp pressure to make sure everything stays aligned and set it aside till tomorrow. I'm not squeezing anything hard here. We just want to make sure it stays together and has a little bit of pressure to hold the pieces together. Before I could join the wings, we had to put the dowels in. There's one at the rear here that fits into the other half of the wing, and that's just strictly for alignment. The holes for all of the dowels are drilled already. The dowels at the front of the wing are epoxied in, and they're what locate the wing into the fuselage. I did have to sand the spar a little bit to get it to slip in, but I was just to square it up and get rid of the excess glue. There isn't any extra room in here, so you got to make sure you got this right before you start applying glue. Once again, I'm using that long set EPO grip paste epoxy. You want to start by spreading some epoxy in the channel where the spar goes into both wings. And then I can spread a good film of epoxy on the root of each wing half. Here again, because of the consistency of this Epo Grip epoxy, I can spread on a decent amount and not have to worry about it running off. Then I spread epoxy on all sides of the one half of the spar, put that in the wing, and then spread epoxy on the other half of the spar. The monocoat covering on the wing halves is so smooth and slick, it's actually kind of hard to handle by yourself. So this is right after I got both of the wing halves together and pretty much seated. I've already put the rubber bands on that they tell you to use in the instructions and include in the kit. Now I'm just using some paper towel with alcohol on it to wipe up the excess glue. For some reason, once you get both halves of the swing together, it gets a lot taller than you think those two halves should add up to. This is the next thing, and I've already spent some time putting on the control horns and the linkages to the servos. This is the first time in years that I've used all the linkage that came with the kit. Top Flight puts a lot of good stuff in this kit and really keeps down the amount of money that you spend after buying the kit itself. Top Flight includes these aluminum tubes, all pre-cut to the right length, for the machine guns that you have to put into both wings. I still need to put this belly pan on the wing, but I'm going to wait until I can put the wing in the fuselage to make sure that we get it set right. I spent a little time getting all the wiring put together and plugged into the receiver so I could make sure that all the control services move freely and are going the right directions. Later when the fuselage is done, then we'll go through and set all the final throws on all of the control services. And this is the final test of the retracts to make sure that they do go up and down as they're supposed to and nothing's changed, there is no binding or anything. I also enabled a delay on a roll bar control box so we get that sequential look to the gear going up and down. And because they're roll bars and I actually paid attention to the instructions, they work just fine. <laughs> 